Yar, someone carved an alien and all into our table. Shivay, my timbas. A scurvy dog. Me gonna cut his dirty fingers, roll it up his tongue, and then I'm gonna cut his dirty tongue and stick it in his eye. And then we'll cut his ear. Stick it up your ass. Hey, Rudo, let me to treasure map. Shut up, you scumbag. How is that supposed to be a treasure map? Yeah, idiot. It's three letters. Two letters. Oh, hey. Hey, oh. <laughs> Hey guys, glad you can join Lebux Ring episode 11. In this one we're gonna create the ambient occlusion pass. Now since Fusion 7 we have a screen space ambient occlusion node. To use it you need two things, your scene camera and you need a normal and a Z pass. If you render inside of Fusion you can simply activate it right inside the renderer. Let's start by grabbing a copy of this renderer. With the renderer selected in the output channels check normal and Z. Now let's get our camera. Grab the navigator and navigate to the camera. Grab an instance and go back and hit Ctrl Shift V to paste in an instance. Now all we need is the skull. So make some space here. Alt click to create a router and then branch out from this router straight into the renderer. Create another router and view the renderer. Go to a frame where we can see the skull, 90 for instance. We want to make sure that we have our normal and the Z channel. Good. Next drop in an ambient occlusion node. It's called SSAO, Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. Connect the renderer and the camera to the ambient occlusion node. Now view it and let's adjust our ambient occlusion. Select the ambient occlusion. It's always good to reduce the samples first if you don't have a good graphics card in order to get speed. For example, I have here 839 and I don't really know why I chose this weird number, but uh, just go with 800 if you like. Set the kernel radius to 0.285, the lift to minus 0.523 and the gamma to 0.095. If you have an OpenCL capable graphics card, you can crank this up to its default value of 2000. I have one. Now at this point let me tell you something. In many cases we can't get a good anti-aliasing when using the ambit occlusion even if you turn on super sampling for the normal or for the z-pass. For instance, go to the image tab of the renderer and in the resolution type multiply 2 to double the value. Here as well. Now the renderer takes a little bit longer but once we have this high-res image we can resize it down And as you can see, this looks much better now because the resize node applies a filter. Now, just, just a quick, quick tip. tip. If you drop in a resize node and the default resolution doesn't match your compositing resolution, it's because you have not set your work resolution. To set it, go to the preferences, frame format and change it to your desired resolution. Also make sure to set the right frame rate. Don't forget to click save to store the settings my friend. If you add another resize, you can see that now it matches our work resolution. Yeah, let's continue with the anti-aliasing uh, problem and uh, we use the same technique to fix other passes. For instance, if you check out the shadow bottom, you can see that we have a rather bad anti-aliasing. Let's check another frame, let's say frame 97. Now this is not acceptable and we can't change anything because this is a software renderer. But no worries, simply set the render resolution to double. And then resize it down again. Now since this takes much longer to render, I suggest that you set double resolution uh, for your final render. Hey, check out this ambient occlusion quickie to see how to fix or avoid alpha issues. Just a quick tip. And where's my rum? 
Okay, guys, you have concluded the Ambit Occlusion Pass episode and... Yeah, you know. My name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Yo-ho-ho! 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 Yo-ho-ho!